Thomas and friends, making tracks to great destinations. your friend Thomas the Tank Engine. He wanted to come out of his station yard and see the world. These stories tell you how he did it. I hope you will like them because you helped me to make them. Your loving daddy. Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams, and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine, and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that, puffing down the track? It's Thomas! Hello, Thomas! Hello, everybody! Welcome to the island of Sodor. Today, on the island of Sodor, we'll see what happens and Thomas will show us one of the island's very special places. But first... Thomas's trusty friends. Thomas was taking his friend Ned to the old brickworks. Ned was excited. Today I get to demolish, called Ned. Demolish, Chef Thomas? Not buildings down, cried Ned cheerfully. Thomas thought it strange that his friends were always excited about knocking buildings down. Miss Jenny had shown the foreman the demolition plans. It's time to go to work, she said, and remember, Safety first, cried Ned and Oliver. Oh boy, said Ned. I can't wait to knock this building down. Oh my, Ned, you're not here to demolish, rattled Oliver. You're supposed to scoop up the rubble. Ned was disappointed. He really wanted to knock buildings down. Ned was usually in trouble for breaking things, but today it wouldn't matter. Soon, Oliver was fitted with a wrecking ball. Knock this wall down first, the foreman called. Stand back, if you please, called Oliver. Mm -mm, said Oliver. The wall didn't fall down. Oliver swung his wrecking ball as hard as he could. Mm -mm. The wall still didn't fall down. We need a bigger wrecking ball, cried the foreman. In no time, Oliver was fitted with a bigger wrecking ball. But still, the wall didn't fall down. Can I help? Ned asked hopefully. No, said the foreman. This is Oliver's job. Ned was sad. 
This is the strongest wall I've ever seen, said Oliver's operator. Then the foreman checked the wall again. We'll send for an even bigger wrecking ball, he said. Ned had gone back to loading rubble into Thomas's freight cars, but his heart wasn't in it. Ned, shouted Thomas, the rubble goes in the freight cars. Sorry, said Ned. He was dreaming of knocking buildings down. Finally, Oliver was fitted with the biggest wrecking ball he had ever lifted. He aimed very carefully, and he swung with all his might. But the wall didn't fall down. Oh, bother, said Oliver. This building will never come down, groaned his operator. Ned was still dreaming of knocking buildings down and wasn't watching where he was going. Look out, cried his operator, but it was too late. The chimney rocked. The bricks crumbled. The workman and the foreman took cover. Oliver and Thomas watched in amazement. Oops, said Ned. Hooray, cheered the workman. Ouch, said Oliver. Oh. Oh. <clears throat> Oliver was dirty and dented. And Thomas's freight cars were full. Bust my buffers, cried Thomas. I'm loaded. I did it. I did it, cried Ned proudly. Smash the smithereens, he steamed. Do you want me to break anything else? Ow! No, sighed Oliver. I think you've done enough for one day.
The island of Sodor is a very special place. And sometimes there are exciting events that make things even more special. Events such as a birthday party, the winter holidays, even a visit from someone famous. And if you look carefully, you'll know when these things are about to happen. Look at this cake covered in candles. You'll always see a cake with candles at a birthday party. Thomas is pulling a special tree. You'll always see a tree with decorations during the winter holidays. And now look at this red carpet. You'll always see a red carpet when someone famous arrives on Sodor. Someone like Alicia Botti, the famous opera singer. Now, can you remember when you would see each thing? What about the cake with its candles? Yes, there's always a cake with candles when there's a birthday party. What about the special tree Thomas delivered? Yes, there's always a tree with decorations for the winter holidays. And what about the red carpet? That's right. There's always a red carpet for famous people like Alicia Botti, the famous opera singer. Sodor is a wonderful place, no matter what is happening. But when there's something special going on, you'll know what to look out for. Today, Thomas must take a boat to the docks. But he needs to go under a bridge. Which is the best bridge for Thomas to go under? The first bridge is wide enough for Thomas and the boat. But what about the mast? This bridge isn't tall enough. What about this bridge? It's very tall. The mast will fit under that bridge. But is it wide enough? This bridge is much too narrow. What about this bridge? It's very tall. And it's very wide. Thomas can pull the boat under this bridge. Well done, Thomas. <whistles> The island of Sodor is a wonderful place. Thomas enjoys puffing all over the island. There are lots of special places to visit. Where's this? That's right. It's Knapford Station. Every day is a busy day at Knapford. Carriages rattle and roll and passengers and porters pack the platforms. Knapford Station is also a place for special events. One day, Sir Topham Hatt presented Gordon with special coaches. Gordon had set a new record for pulling the express. Then, Emily arrived with a special prize for Diesel. He had set a new record, too. He had shunted more freight cars than any other diesel. Everyone cheered. Knapford Station is also a place where racers have started. Once, Spencer arrived. He boasted that he was faster than all the Sodor engines. Then Sir Topham Hatt announced that he had a special for Edward. Edward was to take the Duke and Duchess's furniture to their summer house. Spencer wanted to have a race. Edward was worried. Spencer's bigger boiler only means more hot air, tooted Thomas. 
And by the end of the day, Ed would prove that he could win the race. Knapford Station is also very special for one engine, and that's Thomas. It was the day of Sir Topham Hatt's mother's birthday party. All Thomas's ideas for her celebration had gone wrong. Then Thomas had his best idea ever. He would have the party for Sir Topham Hatt's mother at Knapford Station. The station never looked more wonderful. There were flags and flowers and fine food. Thomas gave one toot, and then one after the other. All the engines hooted and tooted and whistled and blew. Happy birthday to you. Sir Topham Hatt's mother smiled from ear to ear. Thomas thought this was his best idea yet. So that's why Knapford Station is a very special place for Thomas. There are so many special places on the island of Sodor. Next time, Thomas will show us somewhere else. Gordon, James, and Thomas are all at the repair yard. Each engine has a different problem. Can you guess what will make them feel better? There's some coal, some water, and some oil. Gordon is making a funny noise. His wheels are squeaking. Do you think some coal will make him feel better? No. Coal won't stop Gordon's wheels squeaking. It will make them dirty. What about water? Will that stop Gordon's wheels squeaking? No. Water won't stop Gordon's wheels squeaking. It will make them rusty. What about some oil? Yes. Oil has made Gordon's wheels stop squeaking. He feels much better. Now look at James. His face is as red as his body. James is very hot. Do you think some coal might make him feel better? No. Coal won't make James feel better. It will make him feel even hotter. What about some water? Yes, water has stopped James overheating. He feels much better. Now look at Thomas. Thomas is puffing very slowly. His boiler isn't hot enough to make steam. Do you think some coal will help Thomas feel better? Yes. Coal has heated up Thomas's boiler. Now he can make steam. He feels much better. Now Gordon, James, and Thomas are all feeling much better. Well done, everyone. Alfie has kittens. It was a beautiful day on the island of Sodor. Thomas was bringing his friend Alfie to a demolition site. Hello, Thomas, rattled Jack. Hello, Jack, puffed Thomas. I guess everyone likes demolition, said Thomas. I love demolition, said Alfie. It's when we get to knock buildings down. That's supposed to be fun, asked Thomas. The best fun, cried Alfie, and he swooped down the ramp. Look out, small fry, boom, Max. I'm not a small fry, said Alfie crossly. He didn't like being teased about his size. But later that morning, Alfie was happy that the foreman had sent him to work with Ned. Ned wouldn't make him feel small. But as Alfie pulled up, Ned swung his bucket. Watch out, 
cried Alfie. Sorry, said Ned. I didn't see you. You're smaller than you look. This made Alfie feel even smaller. Later, Alfie was working hard. Hurry up, half pint, teased Monty. Not half pint, wheezed Max. It's small fry. <laughs> Alfie was upset. At the workman's coffee break, Thomas could see that Alfie was unhappy. What's wrong, he asked. I don't like being small, complained Alfie. As long as you're useful, said Thomas helpfully, it doesn't matter what size you are. Alfie thought about this for a moment. Break's over, shouted Kelly. Back to work. That afternoon, Alfie was determined to be really useful. He was helping Oliver demolish a building. Oliver's giant scissor claw grabbed the top of the wall. Stop, cried Alfie. I can hear something. Everyone stopped work. But no one could hear a thing. I already checked inside, said the foreman. Small fry is hearing things, sneered Max. <laughs> I did hear something. I really did. The foreman looked inside again, and he was surprised. There's a mother cat in here, and she's got kittens. We must rescue them, said Alfie. The building isn't safe, said the foreman. I can't send my men in there. I'll go, said Alfie bravely. I'm small enough to fit in. In no time, Alfie wriggled inside. The building creaked and plaster flew. Alfie held up his scoop for the cat and kittens to jump in. Here, kitty, kitty, Alfie coaxed. But the cat and kittens didn't move. Suddenly, the upper wall started to crumble. Hurry, kitty, kitty, Alfie cried. But it was too late. Quick as a wink, Alfie covered the cat and her kittens with his scoop. And just in time. Meow, said the cat. Meow, meow, said the kittens. Phew, said Alfie. The cat and kittens were safe. Well done, said Miss Jenny. It's a fine family of kittens. I couldn't have rescued them if I'd been any bigger, said Alfie. You may be small, said Kelly, but you got a big heart. And a really useful scoop, said Thomas. Alfie was proud, and he never complained about being small again. Jump! 
Curve is proud to support Thomas and Friends on PBS Kids. Because when it comes to encouraging your child's creativity, we believe the best lessons in life are based on play. Learning Curve, toys and infant care products. 